Today we're going to show you how to go about tiling a shower. Before you start tiling, you'll need to know how many tiles you need for the job. So measure the area you intend to tile. Here we're tiling two walls. We can work out the area of each wall by multiplying the width by the height. So the first wall is 0.85 meters wide by 1.9 meters high, which is 1.615 square meters. The second wall is the same. Adding these together makes a total area of 3.23 square meters. We're going to be using these 150 by 150 millimeter square white tiles. How many of these are we gonna need, Loretta? Our walls are 3.23 square meters. So allowing 10% for wastage and mistakes, that comes to 3.55 square meters. This box covers one square meter, so we'll need four boxes. Right, first check if the walls to be tiled are dirty, greasy, uneven, or have damaged or crumbling plaster. If they do, you're going to need to fix this first. For guidance on repairing walls, see our film, How to Patch Plaster a Wall. Remember, new plaster has to dry out completely, which can take a few days in summer and much longer in winter. So do plan well in advance. Patches of new bare plaster or old dry plaster will suck moisture out of the tile adhesive and can stop the tiles from sticking properly. To prevent this, we need to seal the area with a suitable primer or with PVA adhesive diluted with water and allow it to dry. You can tile over existing old ceramic tiles if they're flat and firmly fixed. Just make sure the old and new joints overlap slightly. If you're doing this, make sure you use the correct adhesive and always follow the manufacturer's instructions. Keep in mind the weight of the old tiles and the new tiles, as you don't want the combined weight to strain the wall. We're not tiling over the existing tiles as we've removed them along with the electrical shower unit. If, like us, you need to remove your electric shower, you should consult a qualified electrician first. Now we need to spend a little time working out exactly how we want to arrange our tiles on the wall to look the best. Before we start work, we need to lay a protective sheet in the shower tray. It's best not to start tiling straight above the shower tray because it might not be level. Instead, start tiling from the second row. To do this, we need to fix a temporary batten to the wall to support the tiles while the adhesive sets. 50 mm by 25 mm PAR, planed all round timber, is ideal to use as a temporary batten. We need to cut the batten to length and then tap in some nails ready for fixing. Two nails in each batten should be enough. Next, we need to mark the fixing position by drawing a level line on each wall. Use a spirit level to help you do this. Make the height of the line approximately 25 millimeters less than the height of a full tile from the top of the shower tray. We position the batten approximately 25 millimeters less than the height of a full tile so that the first row of tiles can be cut to suit the shape of the top of the tray and the slope of the tray if it is slightly out of level. Before we fix the batten, we need to check for buried piping cables. You can use a piping cable detector tool. Now position the top of the batten to the line. When you fix the batten nails, don't hit them right in. Leave the head sticking out a little so that you can use a claw hammer to remove the batten. Now that we have set out the horizontal start point, we need to work out the best vertical start point. Most houses don't have perfectly straight or upright walls, so corners of rooms are unlikely to be straight either. So if we tile from the corner out, the chances are we won't end up with a vertical column of tiles. So it's best to start your tiling from a point that is perfectly vertical, such as the inside of a shower door. If there's no shower door, we'll need to fix a vertical batten to tile from and then tile towards the corner. If the front edge of the shower tray is open to the room, it is best to tile using this as a start point. Using the spirit level, draw a vertical line from the edge of the tile tray up to the height of the tiling. Then cut and fix temporary vertical battens in the same way as you fix the horizontal battens. Once you've set out the tiling, use dry tiles to check that the layout doesn't result in difficult cuts and awkward details being required. When laying out tiles, it can be difficult to hold them up to the wall. So an easy way to do this is to make a gauge rod from a spare piece of wood. Mark the width of the tiles, including spaces on the rod, and you can use it to work out the layout of the tiles, making sure there are no awkward cuts. If necessary, alter the position of the battens to achieve a better layout. 
Once you're happy, you're ready to start tiling. Refer to our film, How to Choose Your Tiling Tools, for more information on different tools you'll need to use.